time to abandon the magic world of software exploitation in order to move to another exciting field. Fran Ramirez and Pablo Gonzalez are two great security researchers working for Telefonica 11 Path and well-known speakers. They are here today to show us the powerful of AI to enhance malicious activities such as phishing, frauds, and fake news spreading. Fran Pablo with Gangs and Roses, the stage is yours. Hello, everyone. It is a delight for us to be here in this No Hat edition. We really would have loved to be in person with you, but due to the war situation, because the pandemic, it has not been possible. Well, in this talk, we are going to address a topic that is becoming a real problem in our society every day, the fake news, and more specifically, the deep fakes. And these same techniques can be used to, for example, bring phishing attacks to another level. But first, let's introduce ourselves. Pablo González is a well-known cybersecurity researcher within this field who has great experience as a speaker in many events, both in Spain and in the rest of the world. He has also written a wide number of books related to computer security. I am also a computer security researcher and my main goal is to find the connection between computer security and machine learning. This is exactly where Pablo and I are working in our Ideas Locas team or Crazy Ideas team at Telefonica. Okay then, what are we going to talk about here today? We are going to talk about news, fake news and deep fakes. Attack based on machine learning. CEO scam fraud. This is, will be our first demo. Defend based on machine learning. And for the first time, our new detecting big fakes as a service. This will be our second demo. In 2017, we started to see different techniques to impersonate people. In this video where the image of Obama is youth, they used a supplanting of the lips only, synchronized with the sound. The deepfakes era had begun. The fake news started to have consequences in the real world, like in the stock market and in the false news about terrorist attacks, like this one that you can see about a fake attack in the White House that had consequences in the market. Okay, now I will give way to my friend and colleague Pablo González to tell us about the different attacks using deep learning. Thank you, Fran. Hello, everyone. In this section, we will talk about same aspects that we have found while simulating an attack attack based of the, on the use of artificial intelligence. Um, the goal is to look at different methods or, and techniques for performing an attack, attack. We will see a real demo of what, what can be a, a kite and we will also present a new tool that we are working on to detect the fakes. Today we are exposed to important um, important risks that can go under unnoticed we, by the human eye. We must also understand that these types of the attacks become more critical since during the uh, pandemic we have uh, we have increased the use uh, of the software such as uh, Teams, Zoom, Skype. We must be able to detect whether what uh, we see or hear is, is here is real or not. In general, a discriminative model is the decision boundary between the classes. A generative model explicitly models the actual distribution of each class. In the final 
uh, both of them is predicting the conditional probability main p, but uh, both models learn different probabilities. Um, gener generative model learns the joint probability distribution. It predicts the conditional probability with the help of the bias theorem. A discriminative model, model learns uh, the conditional probability distribution. Both of these models uh, were, were generally used in, in unsupervised learning problems. In our case, the decision was to proceed with the generative model. In the branch of generative models based on unsupervised learning, we find an objective to generate examples of false images that are as close as possible to a real one. Uh, in both uh, variational encoders and generate, uh, generate adversarial networks, we will use generative models. Variational encoders learn the parameter of a probability distribution representing the data BAA is a generative model. It estimates the probability density function PDF of the training data. Suppose that a model is training, is training um, a natural looking faces in my uh, In that case, it should assign a high probability value to a face, P2, but low probability, if it is a car image, for example. An image of random gibberish, on the other hand, should be assigned a low probability value. The BAE model can also sample samples from the learning PDF, which is the coolest part since it will generate new samples that look similar to the original dataset. Um, creation, this is the fantastic future of the GANs. For example, we could create new faces from people that don't exist. The, the significant insight that defines a GAN uh, is to set up uh, this modeling problems uh, as a kind of context. This is where the advers adversarial part of the names comes from. The key idea is to build not one but two competing networks, a, generati a generator and a discriminator. The generator uh, trees to create random uh, synthetic, synthetic outputs, for instance, images of faces, while the discriminator trees uh, to tell this, this part apart from real uh, outcomes, say a database of celebrities. Uh, the hope is that as the two networks face off, they will both get better and, and better, uh, with uh, the end result being a generated network that produce, produces realistic outputs. Two players, generator G and discriminator D, fight with between each other. Um, a gun may have some problems during during their training. For example, the discriminator discriminator can become very good and always detect the output of the generator as a fake. This is a problem since we will have condemn it, the generator. The generator may not improve and gen not generate, uh, generate different examples, so it will not advance its learning and it establishes. The model does not convert. Anyway, if we manage the optimist these parameters, the final result is really ex excellent. It's not necessary to be an expert on math or machine learning for using this kind of technology. Uh, everything is ready to use on, on the internet. Uh, GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket. You can find almost any anything online. For example, of face swapping with guns, uh, we have used some libraries that are accessible 
to everyone and on the internet. Also, we want uh, to do a low cost uh, exercise and use our own hardware, as you can see uh, on the on the slide. To perform the tests, uh, we will use it uh, an example of our boss, Chamalonso, CDCO from Telefonica. We are going to carry out an attack that involves uh, the use of different techniques, uh, BAEs, variational alt encoders, and uh, generative adversarial network GANs. Um, first, we will use a neural network to have a generator that allows to produce false schema images. The idea is that using a BAE, we talk the features of a person and the generator returns the images of Chema with the features of the person who is impersonating him. The generator will then provide an output based on Chema images with the functions or movements of another person. That generator will be trained uh, to beat a discriminator who is trained with the real pictures uh, of Chema. The idea is to get a person to move from manage, manage and the output is an image, uh, image the, of Chema if we take many frames per second. We will get a, a video. First, uh, we will train uh, the phase generation. Uh, to perform this operation, we must detect the key points or landmarks of the person's face in this case, uh, 68 landmarks, okay? To implement these steps to extract the landmarks from the face, we use Pix2Pix uh, TensorFlow. In our setup, this operation took three days to complete. This library allows us to reduce the training model, unify the model uh, in a single file and finally, the best part will enable us to, to text it uh, using the webcam directly. To, to, bring, uh, to bring it to life, uh, we want to teach an AI to talk uh, like a uh, Chema. This type of attack shows a uh, video of the person accompanied with audio, where the person is here. This can be very confusing to the person who is consuming the information since he sees a uh, hers with uh, what uh, believes to be the same person. In this real video of Chema, we can listen to his voice and see his face in action. And the air quality data that you have from the IoT sensor in the city and you can predict what is going to be the air quality, you can predict, for instance, what is going to be the the first step was to generate uh, the audio with the voice closest to Chema's, like the one we can hear in the following audio. Hi, Luis. Are you available to handle an international payment of $15,000 this morning? Please find a way around it. I'm currently in Las Vegas and I'm very busy. Um, to teach an AI to speak like a person, we can use Microsoft Custom Voice. It's or was only available for English and Chinese audios. You need to upload a series, series of audio samples of the person speaking in English, but it must have the right quality level to get good results. At this point, we obtain information from a person on YouTube, for example. We collect about uh, 314 samples, yeah, really, of the 30 seconds each. The idea would be to have samples worth eight hours. Um, once this is done, we must then tell the Microsoft API uh, just about 
those audios are silent. To do this, um, we use the Google Speech to Text API. We get the transcription of audios to text and upload them as well. Once this is done, we receive the model and we can pass it the text to create the speech. Logically, um, in our, our basic, basic and low cost example, there are many points of improvement since we did not uh, use all the re recommended audio hours, nor were the audios of the best quality. Finally, we put all the different parts to the, together to create an, a unified demonstration in a simulation on, on a chat uh, application. Um, well, uh, let's see the final result. Hi, Luis. Um, are you available um, to handle an international payment of $15,000 this morning? Please find the way around it. Um, I'm currently in Las Vegas and I'm very busy. Use this IBA number for the account where the money has to be sent. Okay, thank you, Pablo. Until now, we have seen many different attack methods and techniques. Now, let's look at some techniques focused this time at the defense. Let's talk about a new application that we have developed in the Crazy Ideas Idea Locas team at Telefonica. This time, focused to try to detect and defend ourselves from defects. This application is designed to create a defects detection service where the user only has to enter the URL of a video or directly upload it and the service will detect whether it's true or false. It will also create a complete report that details all the parameters that have been used in the application to reach that final result. These project's primary detection engines are based on the following investigations that you can see in the slideshow. What we can see here is the scheme of this architecture. The four engines are dockerized and we also have developed an API to make it easy to integrate it with any kind of software. The operation workflow works as follows. Through the API or directly the file or the URL, it checks that its hash does not exist in the database. If it exists now, it will offer the stored historical result. If not, it will be sent for analysis through the four engines. Finally, the hash will be held in the database and the final report will be returned. Now, let's see a small demonstration of how it works. Going back to the fake news, to detect if they are true or false, we have to use extensions or APIs. There are many, but they are mainly based on verifying origin domains as a true source, analysis of patterns in news content, or keyword search to improve the search, categorization and management of the information. The most used machine learning techniques are NLP, natural language processing, and the LSTM neural networks.
on the deepfakes, besides the engines that we have used in our demo of deepfakes as a service, there is an exciting method based on the blinking of the eyes. Using a Gaussian classified where the measure of the number of blinks and their duration, we can have a first approximation that will allow us to guess if the video is false or true. Okay, well, to conclude, let's recap. One, fooling people is easy, very cheap, if you use image instead test. Two, AI and cyber security go hand in hand. And three, knowledge and awareness are the pillars of which we will learn to protect ourselves. And that's it. Gracias, thanks, and grazie. So, thank you guys for the very interesting presentation. Even in, if not totally ready yet, the evil potential of the deep fakes is quite scary actually. Uh, especially in terms of the spreading of fake news for information warfare campaign. Uh, there are some questions coming from, from the audience for you. Um, the first one uh, asked if, uh, in your opinion, it's possible to create some deepfakes surrealistic that can be used to fool and bypass biometric authentication. Okay, first of all, let me say that we are really, really happy to be here with you in the NOHAT conference. And uh, second, about the question, um, it depends on the technology, of the te uh, bi biometric technology. Because, for example, a face ID is not only based on image, it uses uh, infrared lights too. So if, if the biometric um, way to detect the person, it's based only on image, totally yes, for sure. It can be it can be cheated uh, to totally, but um, some biometric technology use another things and another methods to to detect like for example uh, uh, warm the 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 warm skin for, for for example the heat of the of the of the body or etc. Okay, so a sort of multi-factor authentication for biometric parameters made it really diffi difficult for uh, even for deep fakes to bypass this kind of system. Right. right. Okay, thank you. So uh, we can pass to the second one. So um, do you think it would be possible to integrate a sort of deep fake recognizer algorithm inside video call software in order to spot in real time uh, uh, deep fakes? It could be really useful for uh, spot uh, advanced phishing activities probably, no? Right, exactly. Um, totally yes, for sure. <laughs> because if you can see the demo that we used uh, to impersonate our boss <laughs> was uh, was made in a very simple computer. It, it, it wasn't a, a big cloud architecture. It was, was a small laptop with a big uh, GPU, and we we got a very 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 good result. So if you have money, you have resources, and you have a um, a big amount of, of, of computing of computational power for sure you can create in real time um, uh, voice and image both uh, at the same time for sure okay nice to know <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> it, it's not it's, it, it's not easy it's it's really expensive to do it but you can do it Be, because we made it with only a few resources uh, and only in two weeks training that neural network. So in only two weeks in that computer, we we will be able to to get a, a very good results no, at the end. So we have hope. <laughs> right. <laughs> Glad to know. So let's move to the last one. Uh, someone is asking if uh, uh, did you have uh, experience in uh, real world cases of deep fakes and what extent? I'm sorry, say again, please. Uh, if there are, there was some kind of deep fakes in the real world, uh, ah, okay. I think I think this is the question. <laughs> Yeah, right, right. Yeah, you can find lots of examples, like for example the the Obama one that you uh, that you can see on in our presentation. But the face are getting better and better every day. So for sure, in a in a in a short time, we are going to be um, 
it, no, it, it's going to be impossible to to know if a video is real 100%. So we are we are right now trying to find different techniques to detect that uh, if a video is a is a deepfake or not, basing other things more than the the AI. You know, like for example, the the one that we we said on the on the slide, right? For, for example, the blinking of the eyes, the position of the body. So that, that kind of thing that are outside the AI are, um, I think they are the main factors to try to de defend us against the new generation of, of deep fakes. Okay, good luck for your work because I really appreciate <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it would be really important if the next year in order right. to spot uh, the new uh, coming of advanced fake news that uh, was already a problem until now in the last years. And with deep fakes, I think that it will become a huge, huge problem for all around the world. Right. Uh, so really hard. <laughs> thanks right. for your work. Thanks for uh, okay. sharing it with, uh, it with us. And thank you, Gwen, and see you soon. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye.